Arnaud, I'm CEO of Gold of Research Labs. This video is a quick demonstration of our mining supply chain challenge, a simulator that we've developed to be able to accurately predict the impact that changes on the way that we manage a mining supply chain can have on both its operational as well as its financial performance. The mining simulation app has been designed in a way that it can be used as a kind of a, uh, a business game and that you can play rounds against each other. We've developed full training materials around that for those that are interested to go through a train the trainer process that can do workshops inside of their, their mines. Um, there's uh, the option of running it with single strategies. This video, I'm going to be recording a demo of the push versus pull mechanism. So when I click on that, it basically shows me very briefly the mining operation. So we have a mine here that then produces ore. The ore is picked up by trucks. It's taken to a processing plant. From the processing plant, it produces three products, high grade, low grade, and fines. The product is then taken via train to the port where it's stored in three different buffers. And ships then arrive according to the LACAN times that they have been ordered in order to fulfill contracts that the mine have engaged with and also to pick a product that has been sold on the spot market. The first screen here gives you all the options that you can set up. So this allows you to set it up quite closely in terms of capacities and storage capacities, processing cycle times, uh, etc. To, to mirror your mine as closely as possible. Um, there's a way of setting it up as a balanced capacities where each of the processes has very similar capacities that all are around 3 million tons per year. Or you can use the, the setup as it is with unbalanced capacities. So at the moment we can see that the bottleneck is in the processing plant that can do about 8.4 uh, kilotons per day, whereas the trucks can deliver about 11, the mine can do 11.4, the train has got capacity for 9.6 uh, kilotons per day and the port has ample capacity can do more than 21,000 tons per day. There's an expectation that has been set by the shareholders that uh, they want you to give a 20% return on investment so, so keep that in mind. There's also ways that you can set up the, the various buffer levels. Um, there's advanced maintenance options for setting up uh, maintenance for, for planned and unplanned maintenance. And there's also process plans set up in terms of setup times and switching from one product to the other. And then the, the main screen where you can set all the options, we're gonna be playing this game with the default option set up, but it gives you again an, an, an overview of the performance parameters, the capacity for the mine, the trucks, the process plant, trains and ports, its availability, its throughput per day, its throughput per year, as well as the financials, which shows the variable cost for that operation as a dollar per ton, its operating expenses uh, per month, as well as the level of inventory in terms of dollars. So the first decision is a budget commitment that has to be made that says we are going to be committing to 3,200 tons per year, and we can enable or disable production catch-up uh, there's also market buy-in that says if you have run out of product, are you allowed to buy in product from the market at a premium in order to catch up or not? We will leave that to the default settings. There's a setting that asks what percentage of that 3.2 million tons that you uh, are planning to produce will you commit to contract sales and what uh, premium do you get for spot sales? And then also there's an option to do sell down where at the end of the year to present yourself in the best way to your shareholders, you can try to sell down the inventories uh, to, to end off the year with the lowest levels of working capital, your balance sheet looking good. But that obviously has a downside when you're starting up the next year and that you might not have enough inventory for at least that first month to fulfill all the contracts and you might end up having to either pay penalties or have to buy in at a premium. So those are all the options. Uh, we're going to be using just the defaults for this round. I'll click on next. It gives instructions of how to run the game. And we'll go straight into running the game. We're going to be running it for five years. And the first year, year zero is literally just to, to get steady state. 
and we will adjust the speed to run it as, as fast as possible. You can see how the ore is being produced. You can observe the buffers. The colors in each of these buffers are presenting the time period that that buffer spent in the various colors. So blue means it's higher. It actually had more product than what was designed to be in that buffer. Maybe we decided to keep a 10 days of supply. So if we are sitting at 14 days, that will be blue. Then we've got green, yellow, red, and black means that actually the buffer has, has uh, run out and that will obviously starve the uh, downstream operation. So we've reached the end of year zero and we're now ready to start measuring performance. In the middle part of the screen here, we can see the, the daily output that that mining operation, so pushes at the top, pull is at the bottom. And we can see initially the push outperformed the pull, um, but then pull started catching up and actually going past. In terms of due date performance, pull is, is already performing much better. You can see only about 5% five, 5 odd unavailability where it was late, uh, whereas the push is really struggling because it's producing products, sending it through the processing plant into the into the port and the problem is that if the if you only miss one of those three products the ships can't be loaded and you are incurring demurrage and you are penalized on your on time and full performance so let's run uh, year two is complete we're going to be running year three and then we'll quickly have a look at the, the financial performance i can interact with the simulation as it's running in terms of changing the capacity of, of the mine, the trucks, the processing plant with these little sliders at the bottom here. Um, so we've reached the, the end of year three and, and something to note here, we had an operating budget of 3.2 million. So if we just zoom into that those financials there, we had an operating budget of 3.2 million. That was a budget. Push is currently achieving only 3 million um, tons produced and uh, just slightly less than that in terms of tons sold, whereas the pool system is doing really well. And that is because the mine is only producing what's required to, to maintain the buffer levels that is set up for the optimum processing plant uh, running. And the processing plant is only producing those products that's required downstream to fulfill the contracted and spot sales orders. So it's kind of this pool system where the beginning of the chain is only producing based on what the real demand is at the end of the chain that have been, what has been sold to customers. Uh, another way of describing these policies is push is essentially selling what, trying to sell whatever you've produced, whereas pool is producing what you've actually sold. Um, in terms of the, the sales performance, you can see the budget there was 406 million. Push is only at 388, while pull is running ahead at 434. The net profit budget was 88 million for the, for the year. Push is running well below that at only 9% net profit at 36, and pull is running way ahead. And an interesting number to look at is also the return on investment. Uh, there was a minimum expectation of 20%. We budgeted to achieve 41%. Push is only running at 16%. Pull is at 43%. And then the, the total cost per ton produced versus um, sold is also very interesting. The budget was around $100 a ton. Push is running at $115 a ton because it's penalized in both ways, right? It's producing less uh, because of the constant star starvation and blockage that's taking place throughout the supply chain. Uh, and at the same time, it's costing more because it's incurring demurrage and having to work overtime. So let's uh, complete the simulation for, for the last uh, two years and see what, what the overall result is. At any point in time, we can also go and look at the the detailed statistics uh, at the bottom here, you can see the, the buffer levels uh, in the cases where it went above the target stock levels is where it went above the green line. You can see how with the pool system, not only we are producing to those buffers, but we are modifying the buffers from time to time based on what's happening to the real demand. So from time to time, you'll see that the, the target stock levels have actually been adjusted. And you can see how nicely it, it is maintaining the buffers in the operating zone without running out. 
And then you can also see the process performance uh, for each of the trucks and then all the events that's causing uh, management attention to be dropped. You can also look at the, the stock levels in terms of capacities. And let's go back to the main. So we've reached the end of year four. We're now running for the last year, year five. And you can imagine when we play this game in, uh, in uh, mining companies, uh, you could have different teams that are playing against each other. The first round will be everybody's using the same settings and see how they perform. Um, the next round could be that you allow the teams to make one change and run it again and see how that performs, or maybe two or three changes at a time and to see how the teams uh, compete against each other and which team could identify what was the simplest lowest cost change to make that had a real impact on both due date performance as well as financial performance. So already here, yeah, if you look at this middle graph, you can see that the pool is constantly outperforming the, the push system in terms of results. So let's do a quick overview of the results. And the, the first thing to observe here is the total number of events that was causing management attention to be drawn. Those are sort of firefighting events when buffers went into the black, when the marriage was incurred. In the push system, there was 11,800 of those events in the five-year period. Uh, so the management team would have been very busy. Um, whereas on the pull system, uh, only 2,800. So a much easier system to manage, much more in control, much less red, red lights going off. In terms of financial performance, this is where it gets interesting. Uh, and again, we'll zoom into the financial performance. And I want you to pay attention to the the last uh, second last uh, columns there where we look at the average performance that was achieved over the five years our budget was if you remember 3.2 million tons the push system which is at the top only achieved 3,08 million sales were, were down substantially uh, by about four percent but operating expenses was higher because of the demurrage that was being paid and over time to catch up and net profit as a result is substantially down 59% less than what was budgeted. Um, investment is up by 7% uh, because of the higher levels of inventory, but often those inventories were not of the right product. Um, so return on investment is even down more, 62% down compared to budget. And a very interesting thing to look at is the total cost per ton sold. The budget was around $100, $99.4. The actual achieved over the five-year period, the average was $115, so 16% higher cost per ton. And that makes sense because you're producing less tons compared to the budget and you are uh, spending more money in order to produce those tons because of the demurrage and overtime that is being incurred. On the pool side, the bottom table, uh, a very different story. The average was 3.4 million, so you exceeded your budget by 6%. Net profit was up by 9%, so 95 million compared to a, a budget of 88 million. Your, uh, that gives you a 22% net profit. Uh, the target for the mining group is 20%, so we well exceeded that. And then, very interesting, the return investment is 41%, so right on budget, even though there was a little bit of additional expenses. Uh, incurred to ensure that we don't run out of buffer uh, and then the, the final one is the actual cost per ton was actually less than budgeted running at $98 per ton compared to the $115 per ton in the push environment. So this, is a, this was a quick demo of our mining supply chain challenge simulator that can be set up to relatively accurately represent your own mining operation you can then run it inside of your operation. We provide you with a full uh, training pack and uh, workbook that, uh, that the teams will get when they, when they play the game. They will receive it the night before so that they can study the mining operation and be fully prepared for the next day training. The training can be done typically in a minimum training it would be about two, three hours, uh, but it's also possible to spend the whole day and really make sure that all the various changes that a management team can make on a mining supply chain uh, all the way from how much are we com committing this year to sell in total versus how much are we committing to sell by contract or spot sales 
to actually buying additional trucks or maybe you find that the, the utilization of the trucks are very low in the previous round and you can actually um, reduce the number of trucks and see if that helped or hurt you. So that was a quick simulation. If you need any more information about this or you might be interested to get a copy of this, to use it within your own mining operation for training uh, or just to, to discover how small changes in the right area can have a big positive or negative impact, you're welcome to contact me via email. My name is Dr. Alan Barnard, CEO of Goldwood Research Labs. My email address is alan at goldwoodresearchlabs.com. Thank you for your attention.